I've been in situations where I'm, you know, meeting someone new or whatever it is, and I get asked why my voice is so deep. Whoa, you have a deep voice. Uh, this has usually happened from little kids and stuff, so it's easier, uh, it works better on them, but I think this can really work with anyone. Basically what you do is you say you had a medical condition when you were younger where you had higher testosterone in your body, um, and people will believe it, you know? Because the way transphobia works is people don't view being trans as a real thing, right? And so if you give them something they consider real, right, like that sort of medical condition, they're not even going to ask any more questions. What did you say? What the f*** did you just say? Uh, this has usually happened from little kids and stuff, so it's easier, it uh, works better on them. That's the dumbest thing you could have said! What are you, an idiot? So that young fellow we just heard from was talking about trans girl passing hacks. Then he proceeded to tell us how he tricks little kids with said passing hacks. You know, little kids who still believe in Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, and the Easter Bunny. Those little kids. What's the matter, sir? Adults aren't buying your bullshit? Anyway, welcome back. Thank you guys so much for joining me. So I have a very crazy weekend clown world update for you guys today. And as usual, we have... Well, very little time to waste. So, let's get into it. Now, if you place your attention on the screen for a moment. So, this is from the subreddit trans. So, this person is trans. Trans what? I'm not quite for sure, but trans nonetheless. The caption says, hard to fit in anywhere. You don't say. The hell are you supposed to be? Let's keep this party rolling with this Pentagon official who is a biological man that identifies as a trans woman speaking at a symposium at the Air Force Academy on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Now, this is not a parody skit. This is not some clip from Saturday Night Live. This is 100% real. Roll it. All too often... I hear leaders talk about providing everyone with dignity and respect like it's an aspirational goal. That's not good enough. Dignity and respect is the bare minimum. It's the floor of where we can be. We must set our sights higher and focus on intentional inclusivity because there are still far too many people out there, not just LGBTQ individuals, that feel marginalized, shut out, or discriminated against. So for all of you out there, I ask you to set out your symbols of pride, share your pronouns in your email, particularly if you're a person who doesn't think they need to, initiate difficult conversations about racial and gender barriers, and share a bit of a vu your vulnerability in a way that draws others in. You all have the power to take intentionally inclusive actions to ensure the multiple perspectives that we know make us stronger as we devise winning warfighting strategies get heard. What the hell did you just say? Share your pronouns in your email, particularly if you're a person who doesn't think they need to. No. No, man. Shit, no, man. I just don't understand why those guys in the audience didn't stand up and say, all right, enough of this silly little charade. Get the hell off the stage or we're all leaving. At some point, somebody's got to put a stop to this nonsense. Anyway, next up. So this person who is a biological man that identifies as a trans woman is going to explain to us why he uses the woman's restroom. Ah, oh, this should be good. The comment says, that's the problem I have with any man going into the woman's bathroom. Roll it. There's your problem. See, I'm not a man. I may look like a man. I may sound like a man. But I don't function like a man. I am not a man. If you see me in a woman's room, I will be femme and doing my best to look like I belong because I know that people are afraid. But I am not a man. 
as much as you want to say that I am, as much as you want to think that I am. I am not a man. I never was. Never have been, never will be. I'd be more afraid of you walking into a women's room if I'm in there. So this person thinks that anyone going out into public should still have to wear a mask because this person is immunocompromised. Listen, if you're immunocompromised, feel free to wear a mask or you could stay home. But don't try to force other people to bow down to your paranoid delusions. Roll it. My body, my choice means personal choices. When you choose to go out in public and go indoors without a KN95 or an N95 mask, you are making the choice for other people's bodies. As an immunocompromised person with asthma who's disabled and trans, I not only am a more high risk to get sick, but then when I do get sick, I have less of a chance of even getting treated. And that was shown today. I went to a new doctor's office to try to be established as a patient. They said that maybe if I want my doctor to wear a mask around me, then maybe I, I shouldn't actually be a patient with them. Good. Good. There was an immunocompromised person who was put on a psych hold in the emergency room and refused pain meds for a migraine because they were asking their doctors and the nurse practitioners to wear masks in their room because they're immunocompromised. They were told that they were being hysterical and overdramatic. We can't help the fact that we're high risk. You can help the fact that you're spreading diseases. COVID is not over. It's not like minimal either. This is major. We have people who are high risk who have been isolated for years because people just want to get back to normal. My normal is now not being able to go to the doctor because my doctor won't wear a mask around me. Your comfort is not more important than disabled people being able to live. Well, I'm going to take this damn mask off. Can you imagine walking into your doctor's office and barking orders at everybody to put masks on? But hey, at least the doctor said, listen, if you want to wear a mask when you come into the office, that's fine. Go ahead. But don't expect us to put them on. And if you have a problem with that, bounce. Anyway, next up. So apparently this lovely lady has children because the comment says, what your, ki what your kids think? What your kids think? Well, let's find out what your kids think. Roll it. What your kids think? Hmm. Show you myself. I think my mother is perfect the way she is, and I wouldn't want her to look like anybody else. <laughs> Period. Say what? I think my mother is perfect the way she is, and I wouldn't want her to look like anybody else. <laughs> Period. Surely you can't be serious. So it seems like that young lady and her mom have a great relationship, so that's nice, but. Where's dad? Anyway, next up. So this young lady is going to tell us what it's like using non-binary dating apps. So this should be interesting. Roll it. I'm non-binary. When I go on dating apps, I have to decide if I'm non-binary woman or non-binary man. I'm non-binary. And when somebody says they're straight, but then tries chatting me up and I tell them I'm non-binary, I have to work out if they really see me as non-binary or if they only see me as what I've got down below. I'm non-binary and I get you're a really beautiful girl at least once a day on dating apps. I'm non-binary and I've had the question, what do you have down below and have you had surgery yet on dating apps? I'm non-binary. Of course, somebody will only fancy me when I'm feeling more femme or androgynous and when I show my masculine side, they disappear. I'm non-binary and of course, I'll be the first non-binary person you've dated and who will educate you on how to date other non-binary people, which you probably won't do. I'm non-binary, and on my second date with somebody, I had to have a conversation with them about why JK Rowling is just not a nice person. Wow! The land of make-believe! Hey, real quick, before we go any further, I want to give a huge... Shout out to the sponsor of today's video. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to let this loop on the screen now. I'm going to play the volume in just one second so you guys can hear what this lovely lady is singing. Anyway, today's video is being brought to us by the Etsy store Red Clover Fields. Now, some of you know that is my wife's Etsy store, and she's got some fantastic stuff on her website, stuff I use every day. I take a spoonful of the elderberry syrup every day to strengthen my immune system. 
I put the calendula balm on my hands every day to keep them from getting dry and cracked up here in the cold New England winters. So if you're looking to boost your immune system or looking for some other natural remedies, definitely go peruse her store. I will put a link to that in the description box below. So once again, today's video sponsor is the Etsy store Red Clover Fields. Now, if you'd like to sponsor the next video and help support the channel, there is a PayPal link in the description box below, and I will say your full name as a sponsor of said video unless stated otherwise by you. Taste the biscuit. Taste the goodness of the biscuit. Taste that honey sauce. Taste the goodness of the biscuit with that honey sauce. Eat vegetable. Eat broccoli. Listen. Maybe it's time to put down the biscuits and honey sauce and pick up a carrot stick, maybe a piece of celery. Just saying. Anyway, next up, so just when you thought you'd heard it all, here comes the lesbian Snow White, a.k.a. the pronoun gal, with some new Neo pronouns. Roll it. Today's pronouns of the day are TV static. Okay, now I know you must be like, what in the world is this person talking about? What TV static pronouns? Well, yes, these are actually neo pronouns. So here's how you would use TV TVs, and here's how you would use static statics. It's just like if someone were to use he, they, or she, they, you use both she, her pronouns and they, them pronouns. So it's just the same kind of thing, just with two neo pronouns. Why would someone want to use this? Sometimes neo pronouns can represent how a person is feeling, maybe within gender, because gender doesn't feel good to everybody out in this world. So maybe their gender feels like static. Maybe it's because someone's feeling stuck, maybe because they can't feel like they can open up to people and come out to people. I you never know, maybe the TV static sounds peaceful and brings happiness to this person. But anyway, TV believes in donating to Doctors Without Borders. Static has been calling and emailing Static's representatives every day to demand a ceasefire. TV believes in the freedom of all, not just for TV self. And please remember that I'm not a teacher, I am just a friend here to help validate you through your pronoun journey or whatever journey you're going through. And do not forget that I love to sing and I love to dance. And do not forget that on this channel we believe that no being is free until we are all free and that means all over the world. Thank you so much for being here. I love you so, so much. And that is why. Yeah, I think the pronouns are really confusing. Yeah, yes, I don't even know what a pronoun is. Now keep in mind, that young lady we just heard from, the pronoun gal, her TikToks aren't aimed at adults. Anyway, next up, so here's a time-lapse video of yet another example of what this whole gender ideology does to a young, impressionable mind. And it's sad, really. Roll it. It, like, just occurred to me I should be recording this. Um, this is me uh, one month on testosterone. This is me two months injecting myself with the T-virus. This is me three months of committing tax evasion. This is me four months of running from the government for treason. This is me five months of planting trees and running out of things that start with the letter T. This is me six months on, um, of drinking tea. This is me seven months of eternal torment. <laughs> I've lost count of how many months I've been doing this. Uh, so I think that means it's time to post this. Yup. I'm Michael Jordan. Stop it. Get some help. All right, guys, we're going to be wrapping it up with yet another clip of former Vice President Joe Biden's publicist, diversity hire Carly Jean-Pierre, once again, just gaslighting the hell out of the American people. At this point, it's just a joke, and I hope to God nobody is taking these people seriously. Anyway, things are clearly getting very crazy out there, guys, so please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Till next time, love you guys. Peace. Roll it. Uh, what the president is, 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 is wants to do and what you will hear uh, during the State of the Union is that he'll lay out his historic achievements over the past three years and what he's been able to do uh, on behalf of the American people. You hear him talk about how he is on the side of the American people. That's important. The president has done more in three years in this administration than most president has done in two terms. I mean, that is what we've seen. Excuse me. Uh, the, uh, the f*** did you just say?
and what he's been able to do uh, on behalf of the American people. You hear him talk about how he is on the side of the American people. Why the f*** you lying? Why you always lying? And you ain't black. 